Hello new listeners and subscribers, you're listening to Feed Your Mind. So today we will discuss the original scientific story of the moon. You're going to want to hear this one for sure. Now, the original story of the moon begins 4.5 billion years ago. And according to the scientific community, they have concluded that a planet-sized object randomly crashed into the Earth. They even have a name for this planet-sized object and they call it Thea. No joke. And so this massive Mars-sized planet called Thea crashed into the Earth. And the force of the impact caused the earth to turn into molten rock. Now chunks of this molten rock broke off from the earth and merged together into one perfect sphere that we now call the moon. And gravity automatically locked it into perfect synchronization with the earth so that we only ever see one side of it. Even though it's spinning supposedly. But the spin just so happens to be in perfect synchronization so that we only ever see one side of the moon. If the moon was formed by such a freak accident by this Thea planet crashing into Earth, then why would any other planet ever have a moon? Because such an incredible story for our moon to form is one thing, but for all these other planets to have moons as well, and they're all mostly perfectly shaped spheres, I called out the scientific community on that. And so less than a year after my original moon video came out, scientists came together and came up with a new moon origin story. And so this new moon origin story begins like this. They're saying basically that instead of there being one big planet size object that struck the earth called Thea, they're ruling that out now. Now they're saying it wasn't Thea that hit the earth to cause the moon to form. It's now tons of tiny planetoids struck the earth over a long period of time. Each time these little small planetoids struck the earth, it kicked up a cloud of debris and dust that flew into our atmosphere and collected over time into our moon. So where did these random planetoids come from and why aren't they still striking the earth? And so the scientists are trying to say this was when the universe was still young and in the process of forming. And so scientists haven't been completely clear why they had to come up with this new moon origin story. They're basically saying that they've been had trouble with their moon origin story. And they admit the original story with Thea crashing into the earth forming our moon had a 1-2% to chance of being possible. And so the scientific researchers got together and came up with this new story that now has a 10% chance of being possible. And so their original story wasn't believable enough. So they made a story that seemed a little more believable to the scientific community. They basically just changed it from one large planetoid striking the Earth to a multitude of random smaller planetoids striking the Earth. And what makes both of these moon origin stories that they came up with very impossible is that if this is what you're saying formed our moon, why would all of the other planets have moons as well? It just wouldn't make sense if you're saying that it took all of that for our moon to form then are you saying that this freak accident was repeated on all of the planets so all of these planets all had small planetoids striking their surface until the dust debris flew up in the atmosphere until it collected into a moon that just happens to reflect the light from the sun providing a convenient night light for us at the very least for it to be locked in such a perfect way where not only does it face us at all times but it also has a moon cycle where it lights up perfectly for us as we can set our calendars to it and we know exactly when the full moon is coming and we know exactly when the half moon is coming and the new moon and whatnot and so for the moon to display such a perfectly organized timekeeping system for us we must conclude that at the very least this is definitely showing signs of being intelligently designed and so once again science has to change their story to make more sense out of their original theories that have to do with the big bang because if you have been teaching that this thea planet existed and ran into the earth to create our moon then it turns out you have been telling a story that is completely science fiction and so this original story of the moon of how this planet-sized object crashed into the earth i would actually expect from a heliocentric solar system model because there should be no order in a heliocentric model you scientists keep on saying gravity is the magic answer to everything you claim that you're scientific minded but yet you keep on concluding that all the answers to everything that you can't explain is gravity and 
that it operates and works its gravitational force selectively applying its gravitational pull on whatever objects that need it. And it's just become a real crutch in the scientific community as an answer to everything that they can explain. Look, I'm going to leave a link to my moon playlist in the description box and in the comments. Make sure to check that out because there's a lot more information about the moon that you're going to want to hear. Simply enter your email address at feedyourmind1.com. That way I can send you some cool news briefs throughout the week. It's completely free. For a channel like this to survive, it's going to require us to become listener supported. Please chip in one to five bucks to help keep this channel going. Plus, I'll link you up with some free videos before they even come out. Much more information at patreon.com slash feed your mind. I'm giving away free collectibles from my feed your mind pop-up shop. Simply like, comment, and subscribe and include your favorite flat earth proof to enter. Please click your notification bell. This has been another episode of Feed Your Mind. Thank you for tuning in. Signing off.